intro for the, re the recording. Okay, we're being recorded, everybody. Um, tonight is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015, and this is a Designers for Learning design team meeting to talk about our open adult basic education MOOC that we are developing in Canvas. Um, tonight we've got um, a pretty good crew. I think we're probably at this point, what, 70% of our folks that are, are joining us, and I am recording it for those that aren't here. Um, so I did put together, I don't do this normally, but um, just actually to organize my thoughts, I put together a couple slides here um, of an agenda. And so most importantly, I want to talk about our deadlines. I want to um, give you a little update um, on uh, what's been happening on importing our content into Canvas for our first review. Um, I worked with Eric and John on, um, on getting the content for Module 1 done, and then I'm working on Module 0 as well as the intro. Um, so I'll talk about some things that have come up as that process happens. As we all know, as designers, you go from your um, different versions of uh, design plans to prototypes to then the final deliverable, and now I'm coming up with <laughs> some things that I just want to alert everybody um, to th that's coming up as kind of common things I'm seeing. And then um, I want to open it up to the designers, talk about any open design questions you may have, um, and then talk a little bit, if we have some time, about our plans for facilitating the MOOC and also promoting it. Believe it or not, um, people are going to be able to register for the MOOC within uh, a month from the 11th, I believe. It's January 11th, so we're now down to about a month before this course goes live for enrollment on Canvas. So if that doesn't get you a little nervous, it got me nervous when I thought about it today. Um, and then finally, um, a quick review. I'll go through, I'll try to do a screen share of the Canvas installation. Um, our live site and show you where I am. I'm at the progress I've made in getting things upgrade, up, updated. Um, so let's just run through this super fast. If you could just jot these things down, make sure they're in your calendars. Two weeks from tonight um, will be our last meeting in 2015 and also our last meeting before all of the designers have to turn in all their deliverables. So um, kind of crunch time. And so please mark this on your calendar, same time, same place, only two weeks from tonight. And then, uh, which then brings me to the very, very important deadline of December 21st. And this is the drop dead date. You can turn things in sooner if, you're, if you have it available. Um, but this is the date I appreciate all the designers to complete and submit to me a final version of everything. So everything that you've been assigned um, for all, all of your modules. And then factoring in the holidays and, um, and just whatever, uh, that gives me roughly a month then to get everything uploaded into Canvas and all nice and pretty before the, the, uh, the date that they review it and give us the final okay to go live. And so that's actually on, um, on February 1st will be their final review. Um, so again, running through these dates, January 11th is the date it will actually be listed on Canvas. Uh, people will be able to enroll for it. And then the actual dates that students participate in the MOOC, the 12 weeks runs from February 22nd to May 15th. So I hope none of these dates are a surprise <laughs> to anybody. But let me just kind of pause for a moment and ask folks, do these dates work within your calendars? Yes from Jessica. Oh, I'm, I've got, actually got, uh, got some yeses that I can refer to. <laughs> I said, hey, you guys said these dates worked for you. Okay, so let's move on from this. Uh, so again, devil in the details, details, details as I start putting things into Canvas. Um, and so what worked pretty well for uh, Eric and for John was they, gave, they, they had developed outside of our module template, which was fine. Um, and then they just sent me an email with attachments and links for what they need um, need to be uploaded into Canvas. So that worked pretty well. Um, however, now that we have the opportunity to look at one of the modules in Canvas, I just ask everybody, you should all, all the designers should have access to our Canvas installation as well as a training module. And uh, a little shout out to Eric, who's with us tonight. He said he actually completed all the modules of the training and received the Canvas training badge. So take a moment to yeah. <laughs> apply. Actually, I received two badges. <laughs> <laughs> please, please share, please share. How do, what, what was the second badge? Well, the first one was like Canvas fundamentals, but then if you did the extra uh, one, you got like um, a Supreme Canvas ruler or something like that, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's great. And, and I think, um, I, and I, I probably haven't completed the steps appropriately in the training, but certainly I've had to go through it to be able to, you know, develop in the, in the platform. And um, it is very helpful. And I hope, Eric, you'd agree. In fact, you shared some um, insight on the discussions that we've incorporated already in, in terms of how they can be set up where, for example, people have to post before they're able to review other people's posts and things like that. So, Again, some of these details, it's very helpful if you if you have the opportunity to skim, at least skim through the training materials. Um, and again, if you don't have access to that and want it, you should have it. So send me an email and we'll make sure that you can um, you, you can have that access. Um, and then I'm, I'll, I'll try to start documenting these and maybe send out an email if they, they kind of become more repetitive. But um, and, and again, some of these things are I'm learning as I go along. There are actually now multiple high school equivalency exams, not just the GED. And I think we've been referring to everything kind of generically as the GED. Um, but there actually are multiple path exam pathways. And so if you just kind of generically maybe refer, instead of calling things the GED, if you say high school equivalency exam, um, I think that's kind of a maybe a better way to frame things. Same thing, I, we're kind of interchanging students and learners. Um, so my suggestion is we, we flip, flip everything to learner or adult learner um, within our um, context. So these are the two things that I did notice I had to kind of go back and forth and change. And again, like I said, I'm sure I'm going to find a million more, but these are the two that just jumps out at me. Um, and then as far as how we're linking to reference material, uh, I'm not sure if folks are, uh, have, have ever gone to this website, but the WorldCat, it's like the WorldCat library um, where they index pretty much every uh, reference or book or um, uh, reference material like that. And it's, it's just a nice way to be able to link to that rather than referencing, for example, an Amazon page or the author's page or something like that. It doesn't look like we're trying to sell somebody on going to our Amazon site or anything. Um, this was just kind of a nice common way to, uh, to reference materials is, is to find that link. Um, and then just to do, please try your best to um, include the, the full citations or references, or even if it's just a link to a website, just have it there. So I, I did have to spend a little bit of time um, finding um, some of the references, and, and I just want to make sure I'm, first of all, doing it correctly, and it just saves us a little bit of time um, from, a, from a consistency standpoint if, if everybody just includes their um, appropriately cites or includes the links to references that you want. Um, you want included. Um, and then as, let's see, I think JR, let's see, I think consistency checker add in in Google Docs might catch. Okay, yeah, that's a great point too. Yeah, if we're all using um, that, the Google Docs, that will help me to be able to do like exactly find and replace or consistency checker. That's great. Do you have any other thoughts on that, JR, before we move on? On the consistency checker or on the Creative Commons licensing stuff? Or any of any of it, <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> yeah, like I, I find uh, what I end up doing with uh, the Creative Commons stuff for attribution statements at the end, for the most part, I build them by hand, but there are automated uh, tools as well, like Open Washington has a, an attribution statement builder um, that might make the process just a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, like I only ever ask my SMEs basically for the link where something came from, because yep. um, then I can go find the the rest of the information myself, and it doesn't disrupt their workflow as much. So yeah, um, and that's I, your that your point's really well taken. That's pretty much what I did. It, it came up on John's actually on the on the Flickr um, photos. Um, I had a hard time. He, he gave me the link to the person, the, like the creator, but not the actual photo. And so I kind of spent a long time uh, trying to dig to find the actual photo and whatever. So this is where a lot of this is coming from. But to your point, mm -hmm. um, I think at the bottom of each of the photos, we just wrote um, image, image credit, cited the name of the person, comma, Creative Commons, like, you know, which license was applicable, and then a direct link to the file. So again, I'm sorry to really belabor this but it <laughs> it just kind of will maybe speed up our uh, our process of, of uploading things if, if we're kind of using the same same approach uh, and then this is again gonna be a fairly time-consuming process for me to do this from December to January and so um, 
if, you, if you're not, I just want to get this out there so you're not surprised in early January if I send you a, a meeting request um, to, to have everybody do a quick review cycle of your materials to make sure I did upload everything appropriately. And maybe we can even incorporate some way where you cross check someone else's just for, you know, as a quality control just to make sure again, consistency and things like that. So let's kind of table that for right now, but just kind of keep that in the back burner that in mid-January, one last meeting and one quick review cycle where I may assign you to look, for example, unit two, look at unit three and, and vice versa um, to be able to, um, to QC the material. Um, and then with that, I'm anybody come up with any questions as far as uh, formatting before we leave this topic of, of the deliverable section? Do you have any questions? Is, is that module template work working pretty well for you? I'll interpret silence as an okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think like it'll just end up being a consistency checking at the end because even when I start writing in long form, then sometimes I either mix up headers, header levels, or or the way that you've mentioned uh, doing the attributions on videos and images, um, just cycling back and making sure that um, I've been consistent. Yeah, and it was pretty good. You know, I, Eric and John, I you know shout out to them it was you know it was it was fairly uh, I've, done, I've done worse let me put it that way <laughs> but it's all as jr you're saying even if you're doing your own work taking it from draft to to final um it's it's just a labor intensive process that has to be done yeah j um if i could add something too sure. mm -hmm. um one of the things that that could be helpful is that when you go through the training you get kind of like the headings and the terminology that Canvas uses. And so when I was, you know, doing the quick development there, I was using those terms that aren't necessarily in the other Google Doc right now. So it could be helpful um, if you haven't gone through the training to do that. Uh, uh, w we talked about it, the three of us, John and Jennifer and myself, um, but I, I don't know, did that help you when you were trying to get the stuff back into Canvas? It did, and I know some people have more experience than others. For example, Jessica, Jessica I think you guys use Canvas. Um, really, Canvas is just one big Google Doc. <laughs> and so, um, you know, what, what really ends up happening is you just have to kind of uh, chunk things. You know, right, um, right, exactly. It's kind of a hybrid almost between like an e-learning module where you're thinking about how much content you want to present someone at one instance before you move on to the next. And, and so that that was kind of an interesting challenge. Just, I took your, um, actually, Eric, yours worked pretty well because you had uh, already put it on a, the Google, what's it called, Google presentation. So you kind of had, were already thinking in that mindset of it yeah. being a chunk on a screen. Um, so kind of think through that too. And again, I think the training would be helpful for that. Um, and then another, another thing to, to think about in terms of development, and Jessica, I'm not sure if, if you have your mic or able to comment on this, but I'm also wondering about the balance between how much we put on a, um, a Canvas page versus uh, how much we would then maybe create a PDF or a Word document that we house some material. For example, John's personas. He has six personas. Yeah, would it's a lot of content. A lot of content for one page. Would that be better served on a PDF? So I think, Jessica, for example, you've got your template for the design proposal. Maybe that would be better on a PDF or a Word document or something like that. Yeah, or if someone has like a fairly lengthy assignment, that might be better too as a PDF to just, you know, here's your assignment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree with that. I'm wondering if some stuff would be great as video or audio too, just thinking about um, different modes of presentation and just different MOOCs I've taken in the past too. They usually have a lot of video or multimedia. I don't know. I know time is a concern too, but... Um, if there's someone with a great radio voice, it might be appropriate to pick different pieces that we could do throughout that would be, so that it's just not so much reading. It's all reading. Yeah, it can be really text heavy, so I just don't want them to get too discouraged with that either. Yeah. Is, go ahead. Uh, the, along those lines, um, Zaption, um, I did that quick little like training in there too, and it looks like a pretty good tool 
but of course, like a lot of tools, it's um, uh, <laughs> you can have five interactions, right? So what it essentially does, it'll let you take a PowerPoint <laughs> and, and then you can talk over the PowerPoint. And if you get the free version of Zaption, you can put in five interactions. And then if you need more interactions than that, you have to start paying for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if someone, you know, if someone wanted to use that tool, it looks like it's pretty cool. Um, you can embed questions in it. You can embed things like where people circle things on the screen and all kinds of neat stuff. Um, so how do you think we could, how can we, what are your thoughts on this, Jessica, as far as logistics of doing that? Because let me just flip over to, I'll actually share my screen and go over to, to um, the Canvas instance and absolutely 100% to your point, it's very text heavy. Um, let me drag this down. Can you yeah, guys? I, I think, I think too, like, you know, we talked a little bit about like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, this is just text. We could go over top of it, but I think for ground zero, we were kind of like, yeah, we, we need to get this in there so the people at Canvas know we're for real. Exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. <laughs> and it's really been helpful for me just even, it's one thing to take the training thing, but then another to actually get in there. So as you can see, it's almost, can you guys see my screen, first of all? Can you see this? Um, the canvas screen okay so this is um, like our opening screen and so this links to all the the uh, seven modules but what for example if you click on module one which is the, uh, there's it takes you to again here are all the pages whereas I was describing it's almost like one big Google Doc with you know it, it linked on attachments so here are all of the um, personas Let's click on one of these. I think I may have some images on some of these, but not now. See, this is all text. And then this is John's um, visual thinking exercise. So other than a few images, <laughs> to Jessica's point, we have no video. Yeah, for sure. Um, so maybe you could think about that as you're putting together your draft. If you think of written passages that would be better served turned into a video to would that be probably possibly one way to handle it Jessica or how do you have any suggestions on anybody I guess um, on how to do this that's the suggestion I would have is to uh, take your written text and say this would be a good five minute video rather than have it as presented as text I think that's probably the best approach because no matter what we're going to need a script so mm -hmm. if we've already got it written then we don't have to worry about exactly what to say in the video mm -hmm. so it gives us a good foundation to work from the other thing i was kind of thinking just as i was looking through that those introductory sections that have the context and relevance mm -hmm. they might be nice little you know one minute intro video clips that give an overview of the module just because we'll all have them mm -hmm. so it could be a nice consistent way to um you know more than anything i guess insert a <laughs> uh, personality I exactly guess, some, some creativity and try to help learners connect and engage a little bit more right up front so those might be a great a great starting point and then like you said if there's any other targeted places where it's just getting really weighted down we can kind of identify those as we go right okay let me go to that section you were just talking about to uh, the module template you guys can still can you still see my screen right. i'm assuming they can see the google doc here Okay, so I'll go to, for example, module two. Okay. So you're saying um, this it, it, um, context summary, this in the relevance to practice that section, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep, I like it. I like that idea. Okay, let me think through that. And actually, let's kind of... I'll chew on that a little bit and, and regroup on that in, um, when, when we meet in two weeks. But in general, let's kind of put that as our thought process that we would at least have an intro, a short, but maybe two minutes, two to three minutes on this is what you can expect in this lesson rather than have it something that's typed out um, for them to read. So we, as you're saying, Jessica, we would type it out as a script, but then it would be um, some somehow narrated. So let me think through that. 
I do have a guy with a radio voice. Actually, <laughs> I, I was Jennifer. Saying, yeah, Jennifer. This is Aaron. I'm in. Yeah, I actually have a Yeti microphone, and I could, I do, I can do some voiceover too if you want. Oh, um, okay. I've got a. I've got, I do some ID stuff and I do voiceover, so I can do it if you want. I mean, you'll have to see if my voice is appropriate, but um, I can do voiceover if you want. Okay, so. we got Aaron on deck. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> it's certainly uh -huh. not me with my mini mouse. Um. I'm just going to spitball here for a second, but uh -huh. with the context summary and the relevance to practice, like it might make sense to have like one of the SMEs kind of talking about that context summary or like what the relevance to practice is so for like our section about mm -hmm. connecting yeah to, um connecting to the the standards like it might be interesting just to have like that lot like that real person experience or uh for the first module having somebody talk about like the different kinds of learners that they've had in their their environments and grounding it with that story as opposed to just an overview of the module okay but just uh just an idea to throw at the wall Okay, no, I like it. I like it, and we'll do that. We've got um, such a great crew of SMEs. We should definitely find a way to incorporate them. Um, okay, and then Aaron, I, I like it. I, I, <laughs> I was going to have a friend of mine, um, I used to do a webcast with um, Jeff Lebo. He's got the best radio voice around, but he lives in Korea. Oh, so yeah. He's directly uh, 12 hours difference than me, so <laughs> from a logistics yeah. standpoint, that might be um, really difficult. So, okay, so let's say Aaron uh, will tap you to do that, and I'll work with mm -hmm. you on making sure that we've got, um, when all the deliverables are coming in, like a script for you to, to talk about. And then okay. designers, you can, again, help me, help me do that. So for your mm -hmm. section, have some type of little intro that you'd like Aaron to record. Um, and then I like JR's idea. Let me think through that too, as far mm -hmm. as the sneeze. And Jessica, you're absolutely right. I think you're the one that said personality. As I'm going through it, I'm like, this, this course yet does not have personality when you're looking at the screens going through it. So I think that's an excellent, uh, excellent suggestion. Anybody else on this topic of in including additional media? I think somebody else, um, Eric, were you going to say something and maybe we skipped over you? <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, I, I think Aaron's already volunteered to do it, so that's great. But <laughs> I was going to say that it might be nice to have the same person do all of the modules, and that would add some continuity to the to the overall MOOC okay. um, if it's the same voice all the way through. Okay. So, um, were you uh, gonna, were you volunteering as well? <laughs> do we have to duke it out? <laughs> who me? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, for me, I actually like fee. I like female voices better. They're more I, to me. Female voices are more inviting and calming than male voices. But that's just I when I do when we do voiceovers for a lot of our um, online courses. We generally, I like to ch choose female voices. But you know, um, I'm willing to do it. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll let's let's we'll th we'll kick this around. So we've got you as a volunteer, and um, unless we get some <laughs> some anybody else to volunteer with a, a female voice, I never even thought about that. <laughs> a British uh, British accent is British also accent. nice too, you know. <laughs> so we can get like a, yeah, my Garmin lady or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can can I make one suggestion too? I I like Jr's idea of like having the SMEs in there. But yeah, I, I kind of feel like we shouldn't take out the pieces that we already have in there because one of the things that those accomplish is the thing that Canvas wants is that you have pieces in there telling the learner what they're what it is, right? So, like, if there's some way that we could get the SMEs involved with telling a story or something like that, great. But I think that content there is really important as well. So we might not, we might need to find a way to incorporate the two. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, uh, but make it more personal, right? So if we can get the SMEs in there, great. But. And I think, especially for module zero, I think there's a great place to insert um, kind of a lessons from practice type thing. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a great idea, right? Like you could actually have like, you know, a, a story from the field or something, mm -hmm. right? And get the SMEs in there to, to tell a little story or something. That'd be neat. Okay. 
Yep, I'll work on I'll work on that because that def definitely fits within my section. Yeah, that'd be really that that'd be great. That'd be really cool. Um, all right. Yeah, this is where my skills as a developer are not as strong as my skills as a designer. So we'll have to, you'll have to all uh, kind of rally around me to, to get this final, um, the final push for the next, whatever, 75 days here. Um, okay. So I think I gave everybody is probably as much of a tour as you needed to see, but just to give again, just a sense for um, how this lays out, the students come in and they basically see the homepage. Um, um, and this is kind of squished on my screen, but right now we all we really have activated are discussions, modules, and announcements. Modules are basically, as I said, a series of pages, um, and then the discussions will be utilized to facilitate the group. Um, you know, I, I think Eric, you you and um, you and John have one in the in module one. Um, but if there's anything else at this point, I don't think anybody was going to be utilizing quizzes. Um, we, I did incorporate an assignment for one of the things for John's, an ungraded assignment. So again, I kind of keep repeating myself here, but if you do spend a little bit of time going through the, the Canvas training, you'll see what is available to you to be able to incorporate to do some of the things, practice activities that you have designed. And in fact, even in, in John's section, um, let me hop over to this. We, we have a reflective activity where they're not actually going to submit anything. And I think that was kind of a neat, it's the visual thinking practice exercise. And so um, he's in introducing this empathy framework. So it's again, introducing empathy within your design practice. And so to do that, he's got an, an exercise where they actually don't submit anything, but they're just uh, re reflecting on it and just jotting on a piece of paper their thoughts. Um, so as you're going through your sections, think about these things. Like, how do you want to actually implement an activity, or does it, would a quiz be appropriate, or an ungraded um, um, an ungraded assignment, or whatever it may be? Um, so does anybody want me to spend any more time? Oh, and Jr. Here we go. This is how I did it. Image credit. Can you see this? I think. I hope you can. The um, the person who took the photo, their the Creative Commons license that they've um, license it under and then a direct link to the photo is an example of what you were talking about before. Okay. And Stacy, you're asking, do we have access to this as well when we log into Canvas? You should. Um, and if you didn't get the emails, um, or Hillary from Canvas was, has been working with me to make sure that I was using the correct emails to reach you folks. Um, so hopefully when you go on, you should be able to see it. And then Jessica's asking, is Canvas helping with accessibility or do you want us to create uh, Ah, alt image. Yes, image alt text. I've just been <laughs> type. I've just been doing it myself. So um, yeah, when you upload an image, exactly as you're saying, you size the image and then you type in the image alt text. And I've just been kind of winging it. So if you have suggestions for your photos that you're using, please do. And let me just see if I can find an example. Does everybody know what I'm talking about, or what Jessica is talking about? Okay. So I'm here, I'm editing it. So if I go click on here and I go to the image to um, embed it, here's the alt text. And I, um, that's where I'm typing it. Okay. Um, anybody else want to, let me now actually go back to our template. This is our module template. Does anybody want to take the, the reins here and walk us through any questions or anything you've maybe been working on on your modules? Hey, Jennifer, could I add, sure. add um, just one short thing for everybody? Sure. If you haven't used Canvas before, you know, we were all talking about, like, how do we get people from one module to the next module? Um, and Jennifer, I'm sorry, I didn't get to see your, your uh, mock-up yet. I'm just looking at it for the first time right now. But you remember when, did you put the pinned discussion board in there? Or, or is it just a an assignment discussion board? Um, for your, let, let me go to yours real quick. Uh, all right, so this is the, um, this one, right? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me go. And this might not even be in the final form. I think this is like a, a kind of a hybrid. I think we had, um, didn't you have like a warm up exercise at the beginning of yours? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, think I may have incorporated that part of that in the discussion, but um, but let me see. Let me so under here, 
under setting up the discussion. So here's what my choices are. And so what were you saying? Right. So right now, just so everyone's aware of this, so there are two different kinds of discussion kind of assignments that you can have inside of Canvas. One is called a pinned discussion. Yeah. And when it's pinned, it's on every single page that a student looks at inside our course. Mm -hmm. Right. So yep. what so what that actually will allow us to do is that if we want people to carry what they did, let's say in module two to module three, if you keep that, if you have people do the assignment in the pinned module, it'll just keep following them. Does so that do make you know sense what, to everybody? It does, but I don't know how to do that. Like, how do I physically do that? Um, it might be like more on like the course, like set up. Like okay. when, uh, as opposed to inside one of them. Okay. We, so we can look at that later, just yeah. as long as everyone's aware that there's two different kinds of discussion boards. So if you just want them to have an assignment inside your module, you can do that. But we can also leave it open so people can keep reflecting throughout all of the modules. Um, so that's one way to take what they've learned in one piece and move it to the next. So j just something to think about, which is kind of unique to Canvas that might not be in the LMS that you're used to working with. Okay, so here we go. Here, J Jessica is explaining it. So I would just need to drag it. So if I want yeah, into the um, discussion form. There you go. Into the discussion, yeah. Uh-huh. So that, that's kind of unique. And I think that'd be a good way, like I said, if you're trying to get someone in part two to remember this stuff they did in part one or, or something like that, that's a good place to have people rep, uh, reply. So okay. something to think about. And then anybody familiar with Canvas, can you tell me as we're just in a development mode, it's unpublished right now, Canvas won't even publish. I think they have, actually, I don't think I have the ability to publish the course. I think C says the course is unpublished. So I can't really see what the students see. Is there a way to put it into a mode where it's like a, you know, final mode or whatever? Jennifer, mm -hmm. Jennifer, yeah. if you go to the settings down, I don't have access to the screen. I'm on a, I'm just on my phone. But if you go down to the settings part, mm -hmm. I believe that ah, you can yeah. actually see the student mode on the right hand side and I don't know if you can see the student view and then down on the bottom in the right hand once the student views up that's how you leave it that's just from my memory you're right you're yeah 100 right yeah yeah I'm view. okay perfect yeah I'm still like I I am the canvas administrator now at our school and I'm still learning stuff about it it's got so many features on it so I still have to do a search sometimes to help professors but it's it's really a great tool um, a great LMS. I like it. And you're absolutely right. That's exactly it. I just found it you, when okay. you said that uh, under settings. Um, I've got my screen squished a little bit to fit so you guys can see it, but it's under, um, it was under there. So yeah. excellent. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. Let me see. Does anybody, like I said, I think I'll go back to our, does anybody want to talk about their individual sections or any questions you might have or updates you've done or things you want to update us on? I can uh, jump in since I missed last week. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do you want, do you, are you on a screen? You want me to stop sharing? Do you want to share your screen or do you want me to scroll down to your area? Um, either way is fine. Okay, I'll stop sharing and then you can grab it if you want. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so just for module four, that's where I spent um, a lot of time pulling it together. So what I did was use the template that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, and I have that here. Oh no, just kidding, wrong page. I have too many links open, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. So <laughs> it's a template that I shared before and the link is in our other document too. Mm -hmm. But so what I've done is I used H1s for every tag or for every page within Canvas. Mm -hmm. So how it would lay out um, 
provided the context summary and relevance and I know you gave me some of that language from before and just kind of have been working with that and then each page of module four would be a section of the design plan okay so on the first page you're looking at the purpose of the lesson it briefly describes what it is they get some examples so some of them from um, you know, no more than one to two because I don't want the page to be too long and then I can just link out to additional ones um, that would be a good resource and then at the bottom of each page they're going to be building their draft so I'd give them a template to follow just to make sure that we're um, they're all creating something consistent that'll fit well into the adult learning zone later mm -hmm. um, so then for each section they'd get those examples they'd get their draft um, so it starts with their purpose, then we go to defining the audience, their lesson scope, their objectives. Oh, this is wonderful. Concepts. Um, and then finally the lesson plan. So I use the WPIA model. Mm -hmm. um, and I know people talked before about integrating that into theirs as well. So section um, six, I think it is. Yeah, section six would be that actual lesson plan. And then by the time they get to you and they're actually developing something and working on a prototype, they would take the lesson plan and that's what they'd be prototyping later. So whether they're creating a PowerPoint or a PDF or whatever they've chosen to use as their lesson materials, this would be the structure that they would follow. Excellent. So they're writing it all out. And then I have a citation for where I got the model from. I'll give them an example of that plan and then they'll build their own. So it's a lot to cover. It's a lot for them to pull together, I think. But they've covered a lot of the pieces already by the time they get here. Yeah. So hopefully they should just be revising. And I think, um, and I don't, don't remember which section this is going to be put in. Um, we really want them to keep this. I think that's Stacy's section. Maybe keep that, really keep their scope to, to 15 minutes to 30 minutes max. So that's a pretty tiny lesson, really, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. As you're saying that if the scope were bigger, this could be a really long exercise for them to do. Right? Yeah, module two. Um, and then I know it was mentioned in the copyright section that including the um, statement here. So okay. I can see it here. I didn't know if it would be better in the prototyping section or both. Um, I just kind of kept it here for my reference, I guess. Yeah, you know that I talked. I had a conversation with the SMEs on this. I'm, you know, I was saying that I really wanted it to be this Creative Commons license. And actually, let's just take a couple seconds to think through a couple things. So when the students turn in their final work, the way we left it with the Adult Learning Zone team, we were going to make it. Um, an assessment of the quality of the work to determine whether we did want to upload it to the adult learning zone because I, I mean, theoretically, not, not even theoretically, probably likely, <laughs> somebody is just going to turn something in just to get their badge or whatever and just turn it in and it might not be something we actually want on the adult learning zone. Um, so we were going to have this added step and so if they do that, um, do you think it's a problem if we require them to make it a Creative Commons attribution for license? Um, because there are other choices when you go to the OER Commons. Does anyone have any problems with kind of forcing that issue? That if, if, you, if you submit your stuff to, to us for the adult learning zone, it will go in under this license. I mean, I think from my perspective anyway, the important part up front is really emphasizing that it's a service project. Mm -hmm. so as long as that's clear from the beginning, and they have that expectation. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't see it as a problem to force the issue because it's the whole point. Yeah, and if they don't mm -hmm. want to, then it just won't go on. I mean, they can still use the resource for themselves, but they're kind of missing the point of the whole <laughs> of the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the and I think I mentioned this previously. Like the only part where there'll be a hang up is if they if they do happen to find one, like a resource that's already been created that's say under um, non-commercial share alike or a different license that's not compatible, um, then there might be an issue. So in my section, I think in the Creative Commons or the OER section, I made a note about, you know, uh, this is a reminder that your final project will be with this license, but if there is, you know, if you're drawing on something that is using other licenses, then just talk to one of the facilitators. Okay. And so then I, I was trying to leave the door open that it's yeah. like, that doesn't mean you can't draw on or make something better right. uh, just because of the license restriction. Right. Right. 
That's true. That's a good point. Okay, excellent. And I think this came up in one of the conversations with the SMEs. Um, they, they tend to use the non-commercial and we just kind of go a step beyond that by eliminating that. So, but excellent. Great, great. This looks great. And then what, what is your um, non-graded assignment? Oh, this is the, oh, turning in the design document. Yeah, so just making sure that they actually turn it at the end and that they have it. So um, nothing graded, nothing high risk, just a checkpoint um, for them at that at that stage. Okay, perfect. Um, did, were you thinking about, oh, you, oh, you're keep, oh this, you're continuing on or is this, oh, there's the evaluation rubric, right? Okay, sorry, I think you're still talking and I'm talking over you. Go ahead, <laughs> Go ahead Jessica. Sorry, no. <laughs> um, so then module five in the next section would be evaluation. And I know JR, you have that great rubric. Um, I've been looking at that I think the only thing that I found is there's a couple sections that are in the design plan that may not be addressed in the rubric as it is right now. So I might um, tweak that a little bit just to make sure it's meeting our needs. So it'll go over the yeah, for sure. uh, the do evaluation you, rubric. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Do, do you have uh, editing access on that or is it locked down? I have editing. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Yeah, feel free to change anything you like in there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So then what I'd have them do after they look at the rubric is two sets of evaluation practice. So they get an example of a design document. Um, they'd be asked to evaluate it based on the rubric. I'd like to use, um, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can use the rubric feature within Canvas like a peer review mm -hmm. so that they can actually type in their comments the way that they would for a peer review. That's what I've been testing. I can't find a great way to do it. So we might have to backtrack on that thought. So they would submit their evaluation and then they would see expert review or feedback from us. I guess that's another thing I'm hoping that I can draw on some of you from <laughs> is so that it's not just my perspective we're getting you know, a variety of feedback, but we can talk more about that later. So they would do that twice so that they have the opportunity to see different plans from different content areas, provide feedback and see expert feedback. Then they'd be asked to do a self-evaluation. So using their own design plan and the rubric, they'd have to self-evaluate and then submit um, a revised version of their plan. And then that would require them to also do a peer evaluation. So when you submit in Canvas, you can set up a required peer review with an anonymous setting turned on so they can't see each other's names. They won't know who reviewed their work, um, but they'd be asked to provide feedback in that way. Okay. And I, and I was thinking this might be a good point, depending on how many learners we have left, for the facilitators to jump in uh -huh. and provide some feedback because by now, they've had the chance to self-evaluate, they'll have some peer feedback to look at, and then they could have some uh, facilitator feedback. If we've still got 200 learners in, it's probably not feasible. Depend. I don't know. I don't know what looks, what it'll look like. I don't know either. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> so, okay, can we, so can you go back to this, the value, so the evaluation piece, um, they'll turn in something, and they turn in a true assignment, and then, but it's, it's not, it's considered like an ungraded assignment. Is that right? For these first two, for practice one and practice two, mm -hmm. I would give them a design document. So it's not their own yet. They would just see someone else's okay. one that we make. Mm -hmm. And then they would practice reviewing. Okay. So this is their chance to practice the evaluation process. Okay. Um, and I don't know that they need to do it twice. That's the other thing. I think once I start pulling together the examples, I'll have a better idea of the time commitment that it's going to take okay. to move through. I'm just concerned with a two hour week. Um, it may be something they'll only go through once and then they would just see multiple sets of feedback mm -hmm. so that they can calibrate that way Okay. before they do their self-evaluation. Okay. Got it. And then they will turn it in and then that one, they will get feedback from the facilitators when they turn in their, their own design plan? Yeah, I'm wondering if that would be an appropriate time. If not, we can just let them do the peer review. So okay. Get feedback from another learner in the MOOC anyway. 
Okay. Um, it's just a matter of if we want them to have that one feedback, we can also have them do two. We could have the facilitators jump in. So we, I mean, we have flexibility here at this point. Right. Okay. So I'm putting a note on that because we do have a, yeah, I have, I've got big questions <laughs> and a lot of it depends on what you're saying too, as far as how many people are left um, at this point, as far as how much work is going to be involved in, um, in reviewing. But um, yeah, I don't know how many people actually go through this, get, get to this point of actually turning in the design plan, right? Okay, well, very good. I like the concept. So, and then we'll just work through whether or not it's, uh, we're, we're leaving it as a peer review or if we um, take it to the next step where it's actually a facilitator giving feedback. So, okay, great. Did anybody else want to share what they're working on? JR, Stacy? Actually, um, yeah, I wanted to, um, Felice and I did talk about the, um, the template for, or the, I'm trying to, I guess the lesson plan, because didn't you want to combine the, um, is it Whippia, is that how they say it? And the other one, what was it, Mer Merit? Oh, Merrill's First Principles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were trying to come up with a combination of Merrill's and, um, uh, of the other one so I'm trying to find it now that we came up with like it's basic it's basically just combining those two okay um, so there's just a couple more things in there that you Jessica could just add to your um, the lesson plan outline I guess kind of what you made so um, and, and where is that is that in the um, in the no, stock no it's it's on my computer <laughs> okay do you want to want to pull it up real quick yeah i'm sorry it's totally not on yours um let me just find it um real quick because i gave i sent a copy to her um here's a blank one i think hold on one second um i have to get everything into google docs everything's in word for me um i think this is the the blank one come on Hold on one second, it's opening. Okay, uh, let me share that. Can you see where it says yeah. lesson plan template? Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. it was just like lesson topic name, the grade level, um, the standard, the anchor standard, and then the supporting standard. Um, and then, of course, the purpose of the instruction or the objectives, specific yeah. objectives, the materials, the time, um, the warm-up, if they have one. Some, some of them they may not even be, they may not have. It depends on the lesson, yeah. actually. Um, introduction and then how it's going to, um, how you're going to model this for the kids or what type of presentation you're going to have. Um, how are the students then going to practice it? Um, and then how... I, um, evaluating um, the student's understanding and then a reflection and closure. So I'm only touching on the top, the, the name all the way down to pretty much the supporting standards mm -hmm. and the purpose. Mm -hmm. After that, um, Felice is going to talk more about the other pieces um, and then she's going to take over with some explanation upon that and then they'll move into um, Jessica's piece where they'll actually do it. And we have, we have this template and then we have a lesson that's actually done with okay. all of these pieces filled in. So um, that's, they could actually take a look at that if Jessica wants and they mm -hmm. can um, use that to, and evaluate that. Um, if, if that's not something that Felice is already doing, I'm not sure. Um, so, um, like I said, I'm only doing like the first four or five and then she's going to take it from there and start going into um, uh, the objectives and, and the performance time, like all the other kind of stuff. And then okay. I guess they actually physically do it when they get to Jessica's. Okay. So yep. I don't know if that helps or not. It does. It does. So does okay. that make sense, Jessica? Um, I, and I think, 
I've, I obviously haven't had a chance to do like a line by line comparison, but it looks this this looks very similar at least to what your template is, right, Jessica? Yeah, yeah. I think everything from warm up down is the Wapia model, mm -hmm. and everything above mm -hmm. warm up is mm -hmm. a design plan. Right, and like so the other guy, he called it like, modeling. Yeah. Some people call it presentation. Some people call it modeling. So we just kind of combined them yeah. and you know, add, put them together. That's perfect. And you know what? Kind of why I like this is it's kind of bridging our two worlds because they're used to the the WIPI, I think it's called language. Yeah, with it, yeah. And we're instructional designers. We're kind of you know we're, it's grounded in Merrill. We kind of get yeah. it. So mm -hmm. I, you know I kind of like that. I, I actually mm -hmm. really like that idea. So this looks and this good. has some leading questions as well um, that you can just add to um, Jessica. You can add to your um, outline that you already have, and then they can. Yeah. Could you send me this? That would be I really sure can. Helpful. Yeah, Felice and, then, and I just did this a couple of weeks ago, and I'll send you the um, the final the one that's already completed as well. Okay, so Jessica, is, is, I think you were a little concerned about that, like you're saying, the, how much time things were available. So, is, so really, it's almost like an assembly process for your <laughs> for your section, right? They'll be taking what they did in unit two, what they did in unit th uh, three, and then combining it in yours, right? Yep, exactly. And then what I'm envisioning for the long run is that everything down to time needed would stay exactly as it is on the adult learning zone. So if an educator came in, mm -hmm. they could quickly review that stuff. And then everything from warm up down would be converted into the actual instructional materials. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I were to create a PowerPoint after time needed, then that file would be there and it would just be sure to have all of the components. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's how you guys are envisioning it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, it, what we realized is um, I was anxious to see how part module um, one was turning out so that I can now I have an idea and I can build on that. Um, and then it will roll into Felicia's. So Felicia and I just kind of put this together and then it's hard for you to really do anything until you see what Felisa's kind of come up with. I mean, we have a basic outline, but for some of those details, we just needed to see what was actually being produced and then we can just kind of follow up on it. So like I realized I still have some more simplifying to do. <laughs> like I got to even make it, I have a lot of material, but I really need to make it simple. And that's why I was anxious to see how module one was set up. Cause I knew John and Eric had a lot of information too. And I just wanted to see, um, the layout and the design of how they did that. Yeah. I think the only piece that as I'm looking at it that I don't see as much of is that module one piece as far as who your audience is. So I'm wondering if we should have um, some kind of an audience description. Like I know you have grade level, which is okay. a part of it, but then I'm wondering, you know, we talked about prison settings and other kinds of locations. I just don't know. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, you know, in, in education and teaching, they typically don't integrate a really complicated audience description, but then in design we do. Mm -hmm. So I guess right. that's one of those points where we have to decide what world we're diving into more. Um, yeah. Can, can I, um, John could probably talk to this a little bit better than me, but I mean, they're going to get a crash course on persona discovery which is <laughs> um, even a little more involved than just your typical learner analysis. So by the time they get there, grade level might not, it, it, it might not be the same language we used in the first, in part one. Okay. No, um, but I think, but you talk about grade level though, don't you, um, um, in your lesson though, right? In lesson two, don't you? When you're talking about the standards? Like what Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. That, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what it was. It was like um, E grades nine through 12. Um, that's kind of where it came from. So from from my perspective on, less, on uh, module one, what would be contributing to this would be maybe more, and I don't even know if it comes in here, but con maybe context as far as uh, kind of what you're saying, is it a no? Um, and what would, would context influence the use of the materials? Um, so, for example, if you required internet access or, mm -hmm. um, you know, those types of things. Okay. Um, so, I can't recall, and I don't have it hand, um, I don't have the actual design plan. I can't remember, not the design plan, but the uh, lesson plan template that Aaron put together. Do you have that handy by any chance? Or is I do not. Oh, does Aaron? Yeah. I think he's gone. Let's see. Um, well, 
Do you know what I mean? The, the, the Google Doc thing, and I, for some reason I'm unable to get it, add it. Yeah, let me, I, let me stop sharing oh yeah. this. There you yeah, go. Let me, let me try to find it real quick, um, and then we'll kind of move on here. All righty, where is it? Good question. I'm not going to be able to lay my fingers on it, I don't think, right away. I can't remember how much of the learner we got into that on that document, the learner in the context. Okay. Jessica, do you have yours handy? Is that, have you pulled that from Aaron's thing, your template? No, we talked about it a bit. I don't know if I've seen Aaron's template. Okay, let me see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, I don't think, I don't recall um, seeing that either in any of the meetings i know we we talked about combining the two um the merles and the and the i don't remember seeing anything from here from it Anne. is okay great all right um so this is it starts with the instructor guide where they go through then and so did you did you see this at all jessica or you didn't see this no no i don't think we've talked about this yet Okay. Okay. So this is, um, this is kind of getting into then the nitty gritty, like what standard they're aligning to. And you are getting into this, right? Um, uh, Stacy in your, um, yeah. right. Okay. So you're getting into this time required for the lesson. Um, how about prior knowledge and required materials and resources? Um, yeah. Um, you mean the students prior knowledge? Yeah. Uh, N no, I don't really have that. Um, like, we don't have that on this lesson plan that, that Felice and I kind of created. Um, I can put that in, though. I could sure put that in. I could. You, you know what? That. Let's do this. Can you send me yours? And, like, you, maybe if you and I take a, at all, maybe you, Felisa, Felice, and, uh, and Jessica, and I really start to, I think we're, I, I think there is a, a ton of overlap, probably 90% overlap, and we can decide if we need okay. all the headings and can't, but I think most of them are, as I, as I was just looking through it, um, I think. I do have materials needed. Um, I do have the standard, the purpose. Um, I think that was it. I, I di did not have prior knowledge. Everything else is pretty much the same. Okay. Okay, how about all this? Do you guys have all that? Jessica, do you have all this or no? Um, no, I think some of that looks like um, some of the stuff that was in our module. So that's what I have. Yeah, that's what she has. Right. And all of this. Okay. So now I'm circling back to Eric's point. I, I guess we didn't really have anything on the learners, huh? Oh, I think in, um, Jessica, I think you're originally, didn't you have something on the or at least on my template for my design plan, we had something for the learner, you know, describing who the, your learner audience is. Yeah, so that's one of the first things they would do. So they describe the purpose of the lesson and then they describe, I think the scope, which includes the standards and then the learner description. Okay, and so I guess the question being, um, and I think tying back to what Eric was saying, would they get enough a sufficient coverage of that in lesson one to be able to write that in your section, right? Is that what you're saying, Eric? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that we might want to keep the language similar um, more, more than anything else. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, Jessica, could you pull that up on yours real quick, your, where that section is? And I'm sorry, we're going over an hour, so if you guys need to take off, that's, that's fine too. Oh, defining the audience, right? Mm. Audience description example. Yeah, that's fine. So then yeah. they, can, they, they should have enough um, in, in lesson one because we've given them a sense from the personas who could potentially be their audience. Yeah, I, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we really need to do is if, um, Stacy, if you could route that around to Jessica, myself, and, and Felice, and then I'll make sure you guys all have a copy of the thing that Eric did. Uh, I'm not Eric, I'm sorry, Aaron did, and then Jessica, you've got yours, just so we're all using the same verbiage, but I, I like I said, I, I'm pretty sure we're 99.9% .9 overlapping each other, so is that okay? We're all on the same page there? Yeah, okay. yeah, I agree. Um, sometimes, like, when you're speaking of a specific lesson, when you're starting to do units and starting to make things a little bit bigger, 
um, that's when all of the module one stuff. So as long as they touch on that, um, again, in, um, in Jessica's section, like, let's not forget who it is that we are teaching to. Like, this grade level piece was just kind of like, okay, we're not doing a K through two, you know, we're not doing a fifth and sixth grade. We're working at grade levels of um, nine to 12. Okay. So mm -hmm. That's where that was coming from. Okay, perfect. Nope, I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, and we are running a little bit long. Um, JR, you're good. Did you have anything you wanted to share? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that that rubric was in the hands of Josh and Jessica um, and that it was relevant for, for them. So that was the main question I had today. Okay, perfect. Um, and the last things that I had, um, I, I think, I think we, I asked this before, but does anybody in this group want to stay on and be a facilitator? Because we do have a group of facilitators, and I think some of the designers wanted to, but I just wanted to get a, a list. So as I start pulling the information together for, for facilitators, I know who's raised their hand. Um, anybody in this group? Um, keep keep me in mind. Um, but I, I'll know. <laughs> do I have to tell you today? <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> I may include you then on our my distribution list because I'm going to set up a meeting with a facilitator. Yeah. I'll just include you and JR, you're a yes. Um, I think, yeah. Jessica, you're going to be doing other things in the spring, correct? Yeah, I'm expecting and do in April. So I think I'll probably be <laughs> And then, Stacey, I don't know if you're interested or not. I, I am. I'm with Eric. I don't know what I'm going to be doing right at this moment. Put me on the list, include me in, and if I have to um, um, pull out for some reason, I'll, I'll let you know. But, okay, perfect. Um, so we, we've go got to... And put me on. Okay, that's that's great. And like I said, we do have, um, I think, about six or seven folks who've firmly raised their hands. So <laughs> I think if we get six to eight people that are, you know, helping me moderate the discussion forums and, and giving feedback, However many people that may be, that's the big question, Mark. I, I really wish I had a crystal ball to be able to tell us how many people will be sticking around. Um, so the roles that um, we'll need um, is obviously helping us man the discussion boards and, and help forums and uh, do the, the formative evaluation of our uh, prototypes or des design plan as Jessica was just going over um, and assessing any final deliverables that may be uploaded to the adult learning zone and then we also are offering a certificate of recognition as well as a badge so uh, that's the type of thing I need help with. Um, as far as promoting the MOOC, as I said we've got about a month to go before people can start um, registering. We had a great uh, distribution of materials at AECT. I think I handed out over 400 little cards to people, um, like four, four by six cards that told them how what the MOOC was about and where they could sign up. And then we also have um, obviously our website and I'm working, after I get this Canvas stuff done this week, next week I'll, I'll get a nice little one pager that shows people where to go to sign up and things like that. But do you guys have any other ideas of where we could reach any listservs or anything like that um, that you wanted to toss out there as ideas for where we can reach people? I wish I knew after when you put that survey out, I was like, I'm, I just wasn't sure how to answer because I'm not, I'm not good at promoting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think, um, I think, like I said, I think that kind of the, if we have one home base on the website, which is like one page, which is a, a quick descriptor of what this is all about. And then people can just like start routing that around um, with a little blurb. And, and if I get that pulled together next week, um, that'll give us, you know, ample time to get the word out and we'll just I can learn. tweet it. We can all tweet it. Exactly. <laughs> and our SMEs know all kinds. I think we're going to hopefully tap into a bunch of adult educators that will be um, joining us as well. But um, I don't know, Jessica, you were down at, in Eric, you were at ACT. I think we got the word out down there pretty well. And I think even the guy who's running for president of ACT threw us through a little, <laughs> little free publicity our direction too. So. Um, and that's really all I had for the uh, for tonight. Does, do you guys have anything else you want to add before we wind things down? Um, I have a quick question um, for Eric. Did you say you? I was looking at that um, Zapian um, Zaption. Is that what it was um, about doing some kind of interactive, and then it would go right into Canvas. Once you create something in that, is it fairly easy to um, to download it or implement it into the Canvas system? Yeah, I, in fact, 
I don't know this for certain, but it sure does feel like Canvas has some sort of financial interest in Zaption. <laughs> okay, that's um, fine. I, I just well, I'd love to use it, and if that's the easiest way to go, I would do that in a heartbeat. And I'm going to go through Canvas's training as well. I'm sure that's probably where you yeah uh, roll it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a standalone app, mm -hmm. but it's one of the the APIs that Canvas is suggesting. And actually, when you go through their training that's the the the, the oh app. that's the, the one they use okay that's, that's the one they're using great so it looks like it's you could pick it up pretty quickly and as long as you had the powerpoint slides well it's yep you know you just go through and then it's just like what do you want to put in here multiple choice you know okay. interactive or whatever but be be aware that it's not it's it's not completely free right it's <laughs> yeah no 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 yeah i get that i just wanted something like you were saying a lot of things are text heavy and i yeah. was trying to um make it do something else that's more of an interactive that isn't just text so yeah one of the, take a look at it one of the things i would suggest though is is and i think one of the reasons why ours is kind of text heavy besides the fact that we had to kind of give a data dump at the mm -hmm. beginning yeah um, is that you're going to have to figure out a way to get that piece to Jennifer to get to put into <laughs> to put in to put in that uh, okay, uh, so, into the course. Okay. So, uh, I, and I don't think I have my head fully wrapped around that. Well, and then kind of tying back what we were saying too is if we're going to have one, I guess. I, how much of a stickler are we going to be able to have one narrator too, right? Because it, you, it includes right. the audio then too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. It could, yeah. I have, uh, I'm going to play around with it and take a look at it. But I was just trying, I mean, I have a lot of text as well, but I also need some visual pieces. But if it's an, an interactive visual piece or a piece where I can be showing them um, what they're going to see, if they do go to the um, Common Core website, then it would be better. Um, so... I just didn't know if you had experience using it or how difficult it would be if I created something like this and then we couldn't use it, you know, it's, or it it's, it's all drag and drop. It's, okay. It's like, <laughs> I'll take a look at it tomorrow. The, you don't need to have any sort of technical expertise to, to use it. Right. Okay. It's like, <laughs> um, although there is something like you can use it, to like if people answer things correctly or incorrectly like you can use it as like a stop gap for a badge okay um but i was i was not i was uh i'm of the philosophy that at least for our section i didn't want to stop anyone from as long as they went through the stuff that was good enough right right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> I just wanted to to shake it up a little bit with something different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Let Let's talk about this from a as a kind of final decide. I think ideally we'd have one voice that would be narrating all these. <laughs> I don't know from a practical standpoint. I'm not sure how that's going to happen in sixty days or whatever. Um, you know, to get all this done. I mean, will it be the end of the world if we all create our own Zaptions? I don't think so. I mean, does anybody strongly oppose the idea that um, we would have multiple voices on our sections? Wait, what do you no. think? I don't think there's any, I mean, it would be nice to have like one facilitator that, or one person to go all the way through, but I think the time constraint might be difficult to do that unless it's all scripted out and that person can go through and make seven of them or, you know, and read them all and that kind of thing. But that could, that could take a while. <laughs> it could take a while. You know what? And I mean, I don't want us to look like complete, you know, chumps or whatever, but yeah. I think um, if we consider this iteration one, and like you're saying, if we have time when we, when we revise the course to, to do this again, yeah, it might be an opportunity then to, 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 to right. take some of the, the um, right. deliverable piece, but unless right. somebody firmly disagrees with that, I'm fine with, yes, Stacey, if you want to run with doing a Zaption for your section that's not narrated by Eric, or uh, by, I keep saying Eric by Aaron. Yeah. Uh, right. You just go for it. As far as but, I, even if I, even if, yeah, like it would just be my voice with, you know, when you're on the Common Core website, like where you would click, where you would find this standard, what the standard would mean, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. 
totally um, agree. I would need, I definitely want to do something like that. So I can always do it with pop-ups and with what language without my voice, but that might take longer and that might just be more reading and you know, whatever. I don't know. I haven't, I didn't look at Zaption yet, so I'm not really sure what it, its yeah. capabilities are. So. No, I, and I think as, as you're saying, it's, it's really great for some, um, some screen sharing. Like if you want to just take people on a tour of some website or whatever, I think it's mm -hmm. a great way to do it. So. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry, you guys, that I've, I've kept us 15 minutes a little bit longer here. Um, we could end a sentence to the first that says, the design team participants will hear each of us through the MOOC. Yeah, they can, ex excellent idea. And I do kind of like our whole, like, kumbaya of all this, that we're all volunteers. <laughs> we're just, you know, it, it's it's a, a homegrown um, design <laughs> team. I mean, that's kind of what my, I've always been about anyway, so. I'm, well, John's not here. Let's tell John that he has to do them all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I add that to the beginning of the recording. <laughs> freak out. <so. laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much. And I'll turn off the recording. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks from tonight. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. It's, it's clearly coming through now as we're, as we're seeing the final deliverables. So thank you guys very much. Have a great night. Thank you. You Bye -bye. too. Bye. Bye-bye. See you.